What's up guys, it's Derek here for something really cool. This is the first tournament of set 10, which is absolutely insane. Set 10 came out on Wednesday, so it's only been a few days that people have had with this set and we're already doing tournaments. Uh, this is being put on by Baby Iguana, I think is uh, their name. That's why it's called the Iguana Masters, you can see in the top right. Uh, I don't know anything about I assume they're a European player because there's a ton of European players in this tourney. It's majority EU. It's like maybe 16 EU players and then like eight NA players or something like that. Um, but it's a lot of EU players and then some really standout North American players. As you can see on the right there, Robin Songs is playing. Uh, Soju played and just went absolutely like bought for every single game. It was absolutely hilarious. Uh, Setsuko played and I think did pretty well, though I don't recall looking at his score. Uh, the reason why we're watching this player, which is Snootyboo, was a European player who signed actually by Team Liquid, which is really cool. Why, why you see his name is Liquid Snoo. Um, very, very solid European player. Um, he did best overall in the tournament today. Uh, so I just wanted to see, you know, like what he's what he's doing apart from everyone else, how he's finding consistency, because I feel like this set, uh, apart from almost all others, is going to be insanely skill expressive. So I cannot wait actually to see, you know, what this player and all these other players end up doing to find edges in this set because I feel like this set apart from from any other that I've played recently just feels like so much skill expression like it's going to be the hardest set of all time to play but that also means that if you're a good player you're going to get rewarded really really hard uh, so we see him take what doesn't kill you from the start lost streak augment and he is just basically full open at this point playing a couple units to maybe get a kill here uh, but nothing really Outside of that, you know, we're not actually playing strongest board whatsoever. We're assuming that we're going to five loss in a spot like this. Um, I do think, you know, he's holding on to he's holding on to heart steel here and potentially the edge lords as well. So he's looking, I think, for a heart steel loss streak opener with this what doesn't kill you. That's why I think he was so amped up to take for it. All he needs to do is find an Aphelios. Uh, and then he will have three heart steel, which if you guys aren't familiar with heart steel, because like I said, the set came out so recently, heart steel is the new sort of like lost streak trait, very similar to like underground, except it always cashes out at four losses. Uh, so it's not like this get it early and go for the super, super big cash out thing. Um, it's just, you know, you play it for four rounds and then regardless, win, lose, uh, you get a cash out after four rounds. Um, so it, it's kind of a nice sort of way to do this trait where like, you know, it's not insanely reliant on you getting it in at 2-1. If you get it in at 2-3, then you can play it 2-3, 2-4, 2-5, or 2-3, 2-5, 2-6, and 3-1, and then cash out, and then, you know, like, pivot out of it at 3-2. You can also, more even said that you can get it in late game, which I don't know if I completely buy that you could play this late game, because you are going to make your board giga weak if you're playing an econ trade at, like, stage 4. But it does scale with stage, so, like, the later in game you are, the better uh the, the more stacks you get uh still we don't even have this in yet so we don't have to talk about it too much the other thing is that like i was saying he does have uh an edge lord right now which is this new sort of attack speed mostly like melee attack speed carry uh trait kale is also an edge lord so she's like not melee but you know she's solid um and, and now he has a second yone like he could actually be looking at playing around heart steals i'm not actually sure what his idea he's immediately slammed Gwinsu's. Um, which, I mean, I do think in this set, Winsu is actually a very weird item to me, uh, because at first, and wow, he actually opts to not make gold here, so he does want to hold on to this, uh, this two-star Cassante and this Yone pair, because he could have just said, you know, I'm, I'm just not gonna hold on to the Yone pair, and I'm gonna make 40 here, but he opts to just make 30 and then hold on to the Yone, which is pretty interesting. Maybe, maybe he's gonna put the Gwinsu on Yone later and play towards Yone, um, but in any case, Gwinsu, I feel like, is a very weird item, uh, because I don't really think any of the four cross carries love it. We get our component off of what doesn't kill you here. It's a bow. No more RFC. RFC is now red buff, so we can't go RFC Yone. Uh, he's just going to slam a GS here to actually make gold with this uh, augment. And he does end up deciding to sell the Yone. So interesting that he didn't make gold last round so that he could hold the pair, and now he sells it. Kind of strange, but eh, whatever. Um, he does get the pre-level off, and you can see he is giga rich. The way he's paid for this is that he's 65 HP. I don't know if he killed... Did he kill a single unit this entire stage? Like, I feel like he might not have killed anything. Uh, he does finally get the heart steal in because he gets a chosen Cassante here. So now he has heart steal. You can see that chest on the left, zero out of 20 stacks. Uh, and I'm not really sure what the zero of 20 do. Like, if that's a break point, like, people maybe can answer me in the comments. Like, I should probably know this, but, like, someone probably is 
has seen all the the mort videos and stuff because it's not very clear from the oh he could pre-level again here but looks like he's not interested in it um i i feel like like do you get a better cash out if you're like 21 stacks versus like 25 stacks or something like that or is it just always the same i'm not really sure so it is interesting he slammed all of these ad items because what i was going to say about gwinsu before i interrupted myself uh, is that gwinsu to me uh doesn't really play into any of the ad carries very well uh like caitlin is an ad carry this set but she doesn't play very well she's a four cross ad carry she doesn't really play very well with uh gwinsu because she spends a really ta long time uh like charging her ultimate it's her r from league of legends except she shoots multiple bolts so like i i feel like she's just not really like a great carrier gwinsu he's just gonna immediately take the jeweled lotus here which is something that i think i've seen a lot of people opt to take recently and yeah he's just gonna go fast seven maybe three cost reroll it though i'm I'm still not sure what his three cost reroll option is here because this definitely looks like we want to play towards three cost reroll he does end up getting a ribbon in here which is interesting because none of these items really look amazing on ribbon but this is going to be his chosen this game is ribbon here uh, i mean it makes sense to me to stabilize here because i mean you're 55 hp uh you can you can very easily go fast seven there he's, he was level seven with a ton of gold he's still gonna be very rich with the xp changes i feel like you can push levels so much easier uh and i absolutely love it uh, yeah, you can still make 30 here pretty easily, um, so I have to assume that we're going to make 30, but yeah, he's still on a loss streak. Next loss is going to give him another component, which is nice, but I'm curious what his plan is, because I would think, I think, as the meta gets more developed, we'll see. Uh, Bebe actually tweeted about this, and I feel like Bebe tweets a lot of questionable things, but I think this tweet from Bebe was actually a very good take, is that this meta... Uh, with the way the Chosens exist in TFT, is going to revolve around two things. It's going to revolve around fast seven and then stabilize on like three cost reroll type stuff. Um, so, you know, like this is what I would think you would play in this spot. Or uh, if you have the tempo and the gold, it's like fast eight, fast nine, play around uh, four cost and five cost. Um, I, I feel like, you know, like when you're in a spot like this, like if you have to roll out at seven, it really hurts you if you want to be potentially like playing around like four cost carries because you're not able to hit a four cost headliner at level seven you have to go eight to hit the four cost headliner um so yeah interesting to see we're gonna get our next component here i believe yep there it is yeah he, uh, he took the blitzcrank looks like just four blitzcrank and he is gonna go eight here and wow there's the chosen blitzcrank uh so yeah like he opts it even in a spot like this giga fast eight eight at three five and really really fortunate for him he gets a pretty acceptable chosen already the only downside is i'm still curious who's gonna hold these items because like I was saying, Caitlyn can't hold Gwinsu very well. The other AD carry is Ezreal. The other AD, uh, like, ranged carry is Ezreal, who I think, like, eh. Like, I, I still don't really think Gwinsu's amazing on him, but maybe Gwinsu's good on him. I have to imagine that's what we're going for here. The carry that I really love Gwinsu with is Sona this set, um, which is, I mean, she's in some ways a carry, in some ways a support unit. Uh, but yeah, I feel like she does insanely well, actually, with um, with uh, Gwinsu, because... She, she's all about just these really, really long fights. You can just have her stack up Gwinsu, uh, shield the entire board, and then she will get to her next ult even faster. So you've seen a lot of, like, double Gwinsu. I mean, it's the video that I put out uh, last, right? It was Dish Soap. I think that was my most recent video. It was Dish Soap playing around the double Gwinsu Sona. Uh, and, I mean, he did very well that time. But, like, when you're in a spell like this and you have to go eight, uh, like, you can't reasonably make it till nine uh, until you get something that stabilizes your board. Uh, we can't play around Sona yet. So interested to see like, who this Gwinsu is going to end up being held by, because right now we have it on a KL1, which does not feel good. I feel like we definitely have to roll more on 7 to find someone to carry this item, but we'll see. Really want defensive items here, and we hit pretty good ones. Gargoyle Redemption, yeah, looks pretty good. Finally find a TF who could be potentially that Gwinsu holder, but then it's just, the question is who becomes the last Whisper holder. Uh, ooh, and maybe Lucian is our solution. Hitting the solution here is really, really nice. So yeah, he does end up getting the TF in here, and wow, Gwinsu... Oh, he's going to Urgot item hold these items. That's pretty cool. Interesting. I haven't seen people play around this Urgot unit too much as a carry, but yeah, he's going to put his AD items onto Urgot. I like it. I mean, yeah, the, the Urgot 2 actually stabilizes really well. Um, we just have Lucian in for fun right now. It's just a little bit of armor shred, uh, which is an amazing. Uh, Hologram actually is really, really solid with like a, a tank like this, but looks like he's looking for something else. Lucky Gloves. Wow, okay. So he's going to go for Lucky Gloves here. I mean, actually, yeah, it makes a lot of sense with already the one glove here. You can glove Lucian, you can glove Alawi. Yeah, I actually love this. Um, I, yeah, he with when you already have a glove, it's just so good. Also, he's getting the bug that I feel like everyone gets, uh, where because you put Jazz in and then took Jazz out, or not Jazz, but you took um, 
you put disco in and took it out, it permanently marks those hexes at disco hexes, which is very annoying, but it's fine. Yeah, the Lucky Gloves actually, I feel like Giga bailed him out because he had all these unitemized five costs. And this set, I feel like, very, very different from actually set nine, uh, well, really 9.5. Five costs are back. Five costs, if you itemize them, do a ton of work. Uh, these items on Lucian and the, these items on Alawi are going to be really, really strong, uh, which is nice to see because, man, it hurt playing so much of set 9.5 where you just couldn't play around five costs. Because playing around five costs is fun, man. I, I much prefer play around five costs than play around like, any other type of unit. Like, if we could play around five costs every game, I'd be happy. And, like, that's almost how it feels on PBE. But, yeah, really, really nice job by Snooty Boo to, uh, to stabilize around this Urgot to find the Lucky Gloves out. That's an Alawi. Wait, that's Alawi too, isn't it? Doesn't he have a Alawi pair? Oh, my God. I mean, that's that's insane. That stabilizes him so hard. Now he gets to easily go fast nine. Then he can sell this Blitzcrank, move items over to some other tank, uh, and then find a five cost uh, chosen to play around, which, I mean, yeah, his, his spot is... It, all of a sudden, it's insanely good. It was like... It was very, very dicey, but I really, really liked how he stabilized around the Blitzcrank. I think the coolest thing that he did this game was stabilize around the... Um, the whatchamacallit, the uh the Urgot. And a really, really nice uh vision here to see. He hits Chosen Ezreal here. He says, I have enough frontline at this point. I can move my items over to Chosen Ezreal. And you know, honestly, I don't hate Gwinsu Ezreal, actually. It looks like he's performing pretty solid with the Gwinsu. Uh his spell does not take super, super long. The little blink he does just not takes like no time at all. So actually, Gwinsu Ezreal seems like a really solid uh, AD Gwinsu holder. Uh and he actually pivots into just four bruiser board. Wow, what a cool board. I feel like like stuff like this, like these type of pivots, like the, the vision to be able to see like what your strongest board is here. And like now he's going to pivot into three jazz, which is really interesting because he thinks like the value of four bruisers, like not that high, but like three jazz, we have five non-unique traits in, uh, is pretty solid. Also, like if we can get to uh, level nine, which we're guaranteed to at this point, the value of three jazz is going to go crazy. I don't know who we can add. We can get in like a dazzler at this point. Who? Wait, what dazzler? Are we? Oh, we're playing bard right now, right? You can get like zigs in. Um... Eventually, I, yeah, I mean, like, Ziggs is really nice to complete Dazzler and at a Hyper Pop. Um, it's going to be too Hyper Pop here. We already have Hyper Pop in, yeah, with Lulu. So, I don't know. Maybe Ziggs. Um, we're still holding on to this random, uh, this random Cassante just for Heart Steel, which certainly seems incorrect, but we'll see. Uh, the question is, does he 5-1 or 5-2 it? Uh, he's 29 HP, and he's pretty rich. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could certainly see 5-1ing uh, it here. Uh, and yeah, you'll see he does sell his Chosen there, immediately finds a Chosen Lucian, which can be his main carry. He was looking for some kind of Chosen carry here, so hitting the Lucian is really, really nice. Uh, and he is just going to move all of his items there. I assume the GS goes there, and then LW goes on someone else, like Israel. Oh yeah, he's just going to put the items here for now, um, because he doesn't have someone better to put them on. Uh, and yeah, I, I assume we're going to sell this other Lucian. Wow, I mean, really, really nice game, actually. I mean, honestly... He's got five Lucians. I mean, it's it's pretty impossible to find Lucian 3 in this position with this amount of gold, so probably not that. But I, I assume we still have to roll a bit to, like, find our actual board. Zig's a really nice addition. Like I was talking about, that Dazzler and two Hyper Pop. Going to move items over to Ezreal. Uh, and this is going to be the board for now. Maybe we can go 10 off this. Like, this, this is also one of the coolest things about this set is, like, seeing, um, like, figuring out positions when you can go fast 9, fast 10. Like, because 10 exists in the game... Like, if 10 didn't exist in the game, um, we'd be really incentivized here to start rolling, right? And just roll down to, like, 10 gold or something, because there's nothing else to play for. But because level 10 exists, uh, we're incentivized, actually, to, like, figure out, okay, like, do we want to roll deeper here? Do we want to push levels? Uh, really, really cool stuff. The York is nice, but it's it's not better than, like, we, we need to play around the solution as our main carry. Um, curious to see, actually, because, like, he could actually just fit in a random Sony here, but he, he opted to play the double Lucian for now. I feel like Sona's just such a nice addition on a board like this. Sona sort of like scales with how much frontline you already have. Like if you have no frontline, Sona's not going to create more frontline for you. I mean, she will a little bit, but like she actually needs like your frontline to live a little while. So as many units live as possible so that she can shield everybody. But I'm surprised here about the Lucian over the uh, the Sona. Maybe he just thinks Lucian is an insane unit, especially with this TG. I don't know what TG items Sona get. Ideally it'd be like Gwinsu Gwinsu. I don't know, Gwinsu Archangels or something. Uh, itemized here, nothing too crazy. It's a gunblade. Who does he have on itemized? I mean, this could go on, like, Ziggs. Uh, who else can this go on? Who do we- oh, we have the Ezreal who has one open slot. So this BT is so sad on him, but yeah, seems, seems decent. So, at this point, I think he is really considering just the, the Gonine. 
He he rolled there to find. Let's see, what did he roll when he was rolling at five two? What did he actually find? He found like MF two or something. It's actually interesting that he rolled there. I think maybe he might have had the ability to not roll there because he didn't really hit any meaningful upgrades, and he's still he's stomping the entire lobby with this Lucian too. This uh this level nine, just slap him with your wallets board. And then at this point, we can go 10. Really, really cool game so far. I'm curious to see how his board evolves at level 10, because I do feel like, you know, ooh, that person just got, was that a heart steal? Was that a giant heart steal cash out? Oh no, that was uh, that was Robin, right? That was Robin's um, giant egg cash out. He got a, a fawn, a bunch of gold. He's actually capping his board really high now. But yeah, I mean, we're still playing this Ezreal uh, here, which like I think is, is fine. Uh, I feel like the Ezreal ends up becoming Jin usually. Um, and you just play around MF plus Jin plus Lucian uh, as like your AED backline. Uh, the Ziggs, I think, is just like a solid, decent addition for Dazzler. It's interesting that we're still even playing Lulu because I wait, we're we we cut Lulu, right? Yeah, yeah, we did cut Lulu. Okay, because I was I was gonna say I feel like this Lulu unit does not do too much. Uh, he actually is more interested in the um, in the set than he is. I mean, actually, I could see it. The set over the Zac. The set's going to give you a ton more traits, actually. Right now, he's Heart Steel, which is kind of crazy. I feel like once we cut the Ezreal, like, surely we're going to cut the Ezreal and the uh, Aphelios. But the nice thing is that sets Mosher, um, so that's really cool. Sona 2, really, really big. He does move the TG. And wow, these Sona TG items are actually really good. Gwinsu, Adapticone. So nice job, Riot, on the uh, the Sona TG items. That's really, really nice. But yeah, I think this makes a lot of sense to actually play around set instead of the Zac. I know Zac is... I would say Zac is definitely, like, a slightly better Bruiser unit, but this set is going to add in an entire trait maybe two traits like for right now it's two traits because we're playing around heart steel um which just gives us all the more traits to play around with the four jazz which is just so insane late game uh holding on to the sonas for a potential sona three i'm not expecting it uh but yeah as you can see like he, he values the plus one trait here with the ezreal the heart steel more than he values just this the almost objectively better unit in the gen um because he he just wants to get maximum jazz value, which I think makes a decent amount of sense. I think certainly we're gonna hit Jin to it or uh, yeah, yeah Jin two at some point, and then we're gonna pivot out. I would have to imagine, but uh, I don't know. Well, we'll see. I guess uh, this is a, this has been a very interesting game so far. That's another heart steel cash out, which is so funny. Chosen Jin two, but uh, like you still you really don't want to drop. And there, there's the Jin two, and we move our items off Ezreal. We lose one trait, but we get a much better unit in. Uh, Ziggs 2 as well, and yeah, this is just a really, really beautiful 5-cost board. Uh, I have to imagine the Aphelios should come out at this point as well, but I guess we don't have anything better yet. Um, the Rapid Fire for Lucian is is fine, but I assume like a 2-star 5-cost would be better, but I mean, honestly, there's nothing... Oh my god. If only there were 5 Jazz. I mean, aren't you still... I guess actually, no, you're not really interested in another Jazz, because like, you don't really want to cut any of these Jazz units. You're obviously not going to cut Lucian. You don't want to cut MF because she's Big Shot, and you don't want to cut Bard because he's Dazzler. Um, so actually, yeah, you don't even need Jazz Spat. So he actually ends up taking the Heart Steel Spat so that he gets another trade in. So actually makes a lot of sense. And yeah, look at this. Bonus health, 32%. Bonus damage, 24%. That is insane. So I'm rolled some pretty bad items here, actually. I don't know why she can roll GS. That, that seems uh, suboptimal, I would say. So being able to roll GS is pretty bad. Um... And yeah, we end up actually getting stomped here really hard by this. Is this a Ribbon 3? That's Tentacle Ribbon 3, it looked like. Uh, it's just us versus this last, last player, 10th at Worlds. Who, who did go 10th at Worlds? I'm not actually sure. I guess it's one of the European players, I would assume. Um, yeah, rolling down here for more Sonas. But I mean, there's there's nothing really left to find. We find the Yorick 2, which is a decent upgrade. Uh, I, I do think the biggest upgrade we can find here is just cut Aphelios for something. But I don't actually know what the best cut is here. Ooh, this is actually kind of bad positioning because... The Ribbon is allowed to just walk to our back line. Um, but at least this Jin is staying alive, stacking up all the turrets. And yeah, he gets he gets all these turrets stacked up and wins the fight. Beautiful game from Snooty Boo. Really, really cool game showing off just the power, just, just what you can do in set 10. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch and all my other links down below. Thank you, thank you.